And you also used to write like um, static analyzers, right? You told me that you, you wrote static analyzers to, to find bugs automatically and you, in some point, like decided to leave it. Can you tell us a bit about it, about this process? Yeah, okay. So for context, I think this was before the board racing era. Back in 2022, there was this era where all QA reports and all guest reports would be reported by bots. And on hindsight, it's a, it sounds very stupid because like you will get 100 reports of the same bug. But back then, it was like this. And I think I saw Dravi. Is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah. Dravi. He, he yeah, I love this guy. Yeah, he used to he used to do this also. He had this automated bug reporter that would just scan the code base and then compile a nice QA report. And I remember seeing him win like every single contest. All the QA you see his name as first. All the guests you see his name as first. Then I'm like, oh, this is just, this is a pretty neat way to earn money, I guess, because you just open a code base and you run it, and then wow, free money. But obviously, it's not so easy. But um. That's, that's what I saw. So what I actually did in the past was that I built my own static analyzer. Like, it's sort of similar to Slither, but not so high level. What mine would actually do is, I, I use this Python library called like Tree Slither Solidity. It would pass the Solidity code itself, itself into the AST, and I would pass the AST that they give me into classes itself that are like let's say you have like a contract. So the library would pass a contract into a contract object. And under that, its children will be like all the functions or all the state variables. And I would take this like abstract syntax. EST stands for abstract syntax tree. So I would take this tree and then pass it into Python classes. So that makes it very easy for me to write. Um, I call them detectors. I think Slido also calls them detectors. But basically what you would do is that you would query the AST to look for patterns. So let's say if a, a very uh, popular one last time was like uh, use plus plus I into a, instead of I plus plus. So what you do is you just scan the entire AST for like a variable plus plus and then you just lock every single finding of this and say they should use plus plus I instead. So this is like in essence how how, how my static analyzer worked. I think a lot of um bots nowadays still are still built on this concept. If you look at um I think Picot's analyzer, this is what his one does also, just that it's in JavaScript. Um yeah, but of course of course it's not that simple. Like there was some level of um analysis that you have to do on the AST itself to identify like let's say if you want to do more complicated um finding of bugs like um cache your state variable instead of referencing a state variable every time to save gas. Like, this is, it's not so easy to tell which um, variable is a state variable and which variable is like a local variable. So what you have to do is you have to do some level of analysis on the AST itself to figure this, these things out. And that's how you like build a static analyzer, I guess. Like, this is, there's like a lot of levels of this. Uh. If you go deeper, there are things like type checking and like, I forgot, like, there's a lot of other terms, but this sort of into, like, compiler dev already, compiler development level, because you're sort of, like, recreating the compiler where you take code from an AST and pass it into understandable machine, things that a machine can understand. Yeah, so in a sense, that's what I did. So I did run this on a lot of contests for a period of time. Like, if you look at my 2022 results, for, for those who know, like, if you add up all the contest results, right, and then you see like the my twenty twenty two overall payout was twenty was seven k, there's like three k or four point five k missing. Like these were all from just the static analyzer alone. I would run it on every contest and you'll get like, I think hundred or two hundred from each contest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you didn't have time basically because so you decided to create this tool and. But then, really, you killed it. So I, I guess it was more worth it working on your skills because now in one contest, you get like 44K, which is like more than what you got on all the previous ones running your boat. So, I mean, defi definitely, if you have the time to be doing an actual audit contest itself, you should be doing an audit contest itself. 
But back yeah. then, I think I was in the military, so um, it sort of made more sense to be working on a, a tool project. Yeah. yeah, on a tool itself. Because I would have like two hours a day, and like with two hours a day, you can't really audit anything. But you can build a part of your tool. So 